So we're very pleased that she's here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alex Borstein. and I'm going to talk a little bit about greed. Uh, 15 years old. I was 15 years old once. And uh, 15 and a half, I should say, which is an interesting time, especially if you're from California, because 15 and a half is uh, when you get your learner's permit to drive, which is really exciting, but it's also a big fucking tease. That's what it is. Because it's like, yes, you have the ability to drive. We know you know how to do it. We know you know what you're doing. You, you can drive, but you may not. <laughs> sure, you can drive as long as your parents in the car with you or someone who's over 25, right, with a, with a license, which when you're, you know, 12, 15 and a half, the only people you know over 25 are your fucking parents, so it's your parents. <laughs> if I had a, a friend, perhaps, a gentleman who was, you know, 25, that would be weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> Wrong, I think. So you can't really, uh, you know, you really can't drive, basically, and yet you, you feel so close to it. And I think the learner's permit in that process is one of the things that attribute to teenagers having a hard time and being teenagers and acting out. I think it's one of the cruel tricks that promotes bad behavior by teenagers. Because what is acting out? Acting out is a person struggling for power. It's a, it's a, a teenager is struggling for control of his or her own life. That's all it is, right? You, you, you want to know, you want to pick out what you're going to wear every day. You want to pick out what you're going to eat. That's why there's all those crazy little fat girls and anorexics. It's going to be what I want on my terms. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you want to pierce what you want to pierce and whatnot, right? So it's all about control and power of your own life. And that's, I think, what leads to the trouble team. For me, at 15 and a half, I found an outlet for this desire. I needed some of that power and that control in my life. A greed of power and control, if you will. I, um, I found a wonderful outlet and a way to handle it. What I would do is I'd go to like a retail establishment, and I'd pick one or two special things, and then I'd take them and leave. <laughs> stealing. Yeah. It was stealing. Um, but I found it to be the best thing I could do because it wasn't hurting myself, really. You know, I wasn't hurting any one person. It was a big store. I mean, they have uh, lots of things. They're going to be fine. <laughs> Being raised Jewish, I knew about markups. You know? I knew. Um, I, I never stole from a loan of the Marshalls because I knew the profit margin was low. <laughs> it wouldn't be good for them. It could put them out of business. Um, so there I was, you know, before there was Winona, there was Alex. <laughs> uh, we had a lot in common, short, petite, little Jews. <laughs> but I kept Borstein, she abandoned Horowitz. Can you believe it? <laughs> Ryder over Horowitz, why? <laughs> um, but the only thing, I, the smart thing that I did is I got it out of my system before I turned 18. That's the trick, ladies and gentlemen, before you turn 18. You can do fucking anything. You can kill your own parents, basically. I'm not suggesting it, but if you're 15, you get a do-over. <laughs> bang, bang, mulligan! <laughs> so, so I uh, would go with my best friend to the Northridge Mall which after the Northridge earthquake became the Northridge Fashion Center. But it was still just the Northridge Mall at this time. Brown, real short nap carpeting, you know, it was nice. Um, and uh, we were, you know, going to, this was one of my favorite locations, to assert my power and control. And it was a special day because I was teaching my best friend Frankie how to assert her power and control. <laughs> we were at a little store called Bullock's Wilshire. I don't know if they have those but it was nice and, you know, very overpriced, so they deserved it. <laughs> so we uh, went in there, and it, it was great. She had her eye on these jeans, these really cute jeans. They were peg leg with the zipper at the bottom. <laughs> Got to have them! Got to have them! Um, and I could live vicariously through her, because I couldn't really fit into any of these things, but I could help her get them, you know. So I showed her a really neat way of trying on uh, several pairs of the jeans 
under her sweatpants <laughs> and then walk it out. <laughs> it was that easy. I showed her how to try on a belt, lift her shirt up over the belt, and then walk out. <laughs> I was very clever. I was a very good teacher, and she was quite the student. Uh, so uh, that was Bullock's Wilshire. Then we moved on, and we went to um, Bejangles. <laughs> they had the greatest faux jewelry. <laughs> Because you know it was fun then to wear a pretend wedding ring? Did you ever do that, any girls in here? <laughs> wear a pretend wedding ring and you're like 15 and a half. Like, what the hell? You don't live in the South. No one's buying this. <laughs> no one. But so that was fun, but jangles, and sometimes we'd sell snacks from the candy, the candy bins, the little candy stores or whatnot. And it was never about the stuff. It was never about... I once stole a, a handful of plastic ants. <laughs> a novelty shop. Why? Just to do it, to show I was driving. It was my life, and I was in control. And I was unstoppable. <laughs> We ended the day like we always ended the day, going through Sears. It was kind of a nice cool down to our exercise. <laughs> Sears. And we went down and I thought, you know, I don't really wear makeup. Why not steal some lipstick? Makes sense, right? Get something you're never going to use. Risk it all. So I went up to the uh, cover girl case, you know, because this was Sears. I think that was the top of the line there at the time. And I grabbed a frosty pink with the left hand, and I tucked it up underneath my left cuff, and then I pretended to peruse the other shades with the right wow. hand. I was very good. I asked the saleswoman a couple questions. Okay. Do you think I'm an autumn or winter? I don't know what the hell <laughs> I'd try something on. I'd ask for Kleenex to take it off. And then I, we wouldn't bolt right out of there. We'd take our time. I'd try on some hats. And, move around the place, and by the time we got down the escalator, I had moved it into my hand and into my left pocket, and then I had two hands free. No one knows. I'm so good. I'm so talented. I am in complete control. And it's, it, it is, it's an addiction, and you want more. It is the greediest, craziest little thing. And keep in mind that in my back pocket, in my wallet, I have like $25. I could have purchased any of these dumb items. Like, perhaps, you know, a handful of plastic ants. <laughs> um, I think I may still have the plastic ants, which is kind of interesting. I should find them. Uh, so we were leaving. Frankie and I are leaving Sears, and we walk out. I'm feeling very cocky and very, very much in control of my own destiny. And we walk out, and these two people that, at the time, seemed very old to me, uh, a man and a woman, I think they were probably like, 25 to 30. I could have actually driven a car with one of them in the car. <laughs> Come to think of it, uh, a woman grabs me by the arm, they stand in front of us, and she grabs me by the arm and does that pinch, does that fucking good junior high teacher pinch. <laughs> She's like, um, can I have the lipstick from your front right pocket? And I say, no, but she can have it from my left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busted, and I'm still, I'm an asshole. I'm such a little asshole, and I give myself up. No, like, I don't think they are allowed to search you or anything, but I was so cocky. I'm like, no, but here it is. <laughs> so she grabbed me by the arm. They asked my friend. They turned to Frankie, and they said, do you have any stolen Sears merchandise? And she said, no. Total, you know, she, she was able to say that honestly, and then she waddled off in her four pairs of jeans. <laughs> but they were from Bullets Woolshire, so she wasn't lying. It wasn't lying. Just stealing. <laughs> Better, right? Um, and she's like, bye, I'll call you. <laughs> there comes a time when every teacher sees their student pass them up, don't they? That, that was my time. They took me into the holding area at Sears. There's one in every department store, apparently. It's a little white room, and there's no windows, and it's all fluorescent lighting. I looked horrible. Um, they sat me down, and they kept trying to ask me questions, and they wanted to talk to me. They wanted to find out what was going on, why, why I did what I did, and get to the bottom of it. And I knew, I knew my rights. I, I wasn't speaking. There was no lawyer or phone call. or It wasn't jail. I had no idea. But I thought it was. And all I would do was occasionally sing. I'd break into like Pat Benatar lyrics. Just to <laughs> <laughs> Did you know what you were doing? Do you know how much trouble you're in? You're a heartbreaker, dream maker, love taker, don't you mess around with me. <laughs> That'll learn them, I showed them. 
what? Um, was there for about an hour, and then the police showed up. The real police, with guns and the, and the blue suits. And I'd seen police, you know, before this time, but not up close. And they, they grabbed me, and they put handcuffs on me, and they took me out in the parking lot, and everyone could see me, and they stuffed me into the back of the police car, and I was like, hell is for children. <laughs> <laughs> the singing slowly stopped, <laughs> and they drove me to the Northridge Police Station. And you know, it's not Compton or South Central, but it was rough. Okay, <laughs> I was scared, and they proceeded to scare the shit out of me. They knew what they were doing. It was this tough love kind of thing. So they uh, put me in a holding area, and they handcuffed me to a bench with real criminals. <laughs> For Northridge, it was like a jaywalker and a DUI, but I didn't know that. <laughs> I had no idea. It was terrifying. I was terrifying. I was the youngest part one in the room, and they let me sit there for hours. I was there for like four hours, and then finally, Detective, Detective Mike, he asked I should call him, uh, picked me up, took me into the room, sat me down in the chair into the questioning area, took the handcuffs off me, and then I did what I always saw in the movies. <laughs> Which really is what you want to do when they take handcuffs off you. It does kind of pinch me. Um, but it was kind of, I did feel a little bit cool, but also very scared. Um, and, uh, and he, he questioned me long and hard, and he, he, he really, he really scared me. He really did a very good job. Um, and I think he enjoyed it too. It was different for him. I was the, you know, first, like, like little Jewish kid he'd ever seen, and I kept looking for little horns, and like, continuous So he, um, Questioned me, and then the end of the, you know, said, "Look, if you don't, if you don't watch what you're doing, little missy, and you don't keep a straight and narrow, you're gonna end up a uh, homeless hooker on drugs." <laughs> and I completely bought it. I thought, "Holy shit, I'm gonna be homeless and a hooker <laughs> and on drugs. This is awful. It was lunatic." <laughs> he asked, he said, let me tell you, you know, you're under 18, this is going to help you out, we can work this out, we need to talk to your parents, give us the phone number. Okay. It's 818-701-9358. And he called it. And I had really lied, that was me and my brother's phone number. <laughs> and there was a little part of me that still was an asshole and thought, maybe they'll get my brother, my brother won't tell my parents and he'll come and he'll let me out, but he's over, he's over 16, he can drive on his own, maybe, please, God. There was no answer. And they said, well, we can't get in touch with your parents, little lady. You're, after six o'clock, you're just gonna have to sleep here overnight. And I bought it. I really thought, like, the police station closes at six. <laughs> I said, okay. It's 818-701-9356. By the age of this my line, but five six is my parents' line. Called, called, no answer. We had no answering machine at that time. No one was home, and they thought I was fucking with them, and they kept getting more angry, and I saw it. <laughs> Maybe they're a temple. <laughs> I really had no idea who they were, and they really scared me. I thought I was going to die there, and they said, is there anyone else that we can call? And the only person that I could think of, I'm like, well, maybe my grandma. And I'm like, okay, let's have her number. My grandmother is about the size of this little fucking cup. <laughs> about this big, little Hungarian woman with a very thick accent, and just kind of understands English, but kind of not, you know, whatever works for her on that certain day. <laughs> so please call her. Ma'am. Hi, this is Detective Mike. I'm calling from the Northridge Police Department. We have your granddaughter here. She was arrested for shoplifting. Who is this? <laughs> this is Detective Mike. I'm calling from the Northridge Police Division. We have your granddaughter. She was arrested for shoplifting. And... <laughs> I said, I swear to God, that's my grandmother. Did she have a funny accent? Yes. Please, try again. He calls again. This is Detective Mike from the police department, blah, 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 we have your granddaughter. Sir, this is some kind of sick joke you are making. You make a joke for me? And... No! Three times a charm, he calls her up. She finally gets that this is real. Says, bring her to me. 
<laughs> doesn't drive. He takes me to, uh, takes me to Grandma's house, drops me off in front with the lights going and everything, and I am terrified. And this worked, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm, I am terrified not to even take a free sample. <laughs> I won't do it. And uh, he drops me off. Grandma says, "Thank you very much. I am ter terrible sorry. This was a mistake. Will never to happen again." He says, whatever the fuck, I don't know what you just said. <laughs> she just looks at me. Pa my parents, keep in mind, are both shrinks, never laid a hand on me. She just looks at me, touches the back of my head, grabs my hair, and slams me into the fucking wall. <laughs> Bam! Bam! <laughs> looks me in the eye. No. You are hungry? And on that day, my greed for power and control turned to food. <laughs> Where it has stayed ever since. I want to say thank you to my grandmother and good night.